Morning guys, welcome back to another vlog. Today we are setting out on our incredible South Island road trip. Over the course of eight days and seven nights, we're gonna see as much as possible. Now we are traveling with family, so I'm gonna try my best to film as much as I can, but I'm so excited, can't wait. Let's see how much we can see in this very short amount of time. Let's hit the road. The first leg of the journey takes us from Nelson to Christchurch, where we'll be spending two nights exploring one of our favorite New Zealand cities. First stop, Buller Gorge, New Zealand's longest swing bridge. Let's check it out. Buller Gorge was $12.50 per adult to cross the bridge and walk around the bush track. Jet boat. Oh, cool. Go down. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. It was a nice spot to stretch our legs, but can be skipped if you're in more of a rush. Our next destination on this leg of the journey is Brew Moon Brewing in Amberley. their beers at various beer fests but hadn't made the trip to their tap room. The tap room was great and we really loved the outdoor patio. Highly recommend this spot. Finally made it to our first stop in Christchurch, our first night of this road trip. We've got a concert tonight and then some exploring to do tomorrow. That's gonna wrap it up for the day so we'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Morning guys, welcome to day number two on this road trip. Today we are in Christchurch doing a bit of exploring and the first stop on this beautiful sunny day is the Christchurch Botanic Gardens. This is an incredible thing that is free to do in Christchurch and it is summer right now so it's just spectacular. So peaceful, so gorgeous and we're gonna spend the day checking out some sights so come with us. visited the Christchurch Botanic Gardens was in winter, so it was such a treat to see all of the flowers in full bloom during this trip. buildings on the grounds to go into and explore and it's just the best way to spend a morning. Not a bad spot for a little snack. I'm gonna eat this up, meet up with some family, and then we're gonna keep exploring. We then made our way to New Brighton Beach for a quick walk down the pier before heading to Littleton. Eruption is one of our favorite craft breweries in New Zealand and we greatly enjoyed the rooftop patio while taking in the sights of the harbour.
afterwards, we made our way up to Summit Road for some incredible views on either side. Looking down at Christchurch City Center with the ocean, and then on the other side with Littleton Harbor, just spectacular views all around. We carried on to Sumner, an adorable beach suburb home to Cave Rock, which you can actually walk straight through at low tide. brewery for a quick refreshment before driving up to the Kashmir Hill Lookout, a spot we frequented when we lived in the area over winter. It was really special to return and share this place with family. As the sun started to dip, we returned to the city center and the Riverside Market area to explore and enjoy our last few hours in Christchurch. This here is the Earthquake Memorial from 2011, a beautiful place to appreciate the beauty of the area. No visit to Christchurch is complete without stopping by the famous Christchurch Cathedral to see how the reconstruction is progressing. Butter chicken. Butter chicken. Nice party. Day three entails a four hour drive to the Hooker Valley track and Mount Cook. We stop in Fairley for a delicious pie before making a quick stop in Lake Tekapo to catch the last of the famed lupin season and beautiful scenery. Mount Cook and a three hour return hike. This hike is probably the most iconic in New Zealand and definitely a must do. The hike itself is quite easy and my favorite part is crossing the three swing bridges. crazy windy and overcast this day, but we got lucky as the clouds parted to reveal Araki Mount Cook in all her glory. Hey guys, and welcome to day three of the South Island road trip. It is extremely windy right now, so I'm hoping you can hear me. We are currently at Tasman Glacier, checking it out for the very first time. We just did the Mount Cook hike, which was very rainy, very windy, but Super spectacular, absolutely beautiful. And that is pretty much gonna wrap it up for today. So we'll see you guys tomorrow morning. On day four, we began our journey to Dunedin. We got lots to see along the way and our first stop is the Waitaki Dam Lookout. Then off to Elephant Rocks. These large weathered limestone rocks are a short two minute walk from the car park and were one of my favorite stops on this road trip. There's something so interesting and unique about seeing formations like these in the middle of farmland. way to Oamaru or Omaru depending on how you like to say it, which is known for its Victorian architecture and penguin colonies. It's 
also well known for its steampunk headquarters museum. And despite my hesitation, we explored the museum and I really enjoyed this really cool like light and mirror portal room. Tickets were 15 New Zealand dollars per person for this. stop was Moraki boulders. These boulders are along the beach and have some very interesting characteristics. They are septarian concretions formed about 65 million years ago. They have cracks and cavities aligned with calcite and you can see some destroyed boulders about the beach for closer inspection. According to Wikipedia, they've actually come from the cliffside via coastal erosion and they're expecting more to come with time, so that's really cool. This is a really iconic spot and definitely an Instagram-worthy spot to take some photos. Our next stop is Shag Point to catch some New Zealand fur seals in their natural habitat in one of the most beautiful spots along our journey. Now off to Dunedin for some quick city explorations before bed. Day four begins with a trip to the steepest street in the world, Baldwin Street. Then we are off to the Signal Hill Lookout to take in the panoramic views of Dunedin and the Otago Peninsula below. Another great scenic spot to wander about in Dunedin is the University of Otago campus. There's some really gorgeous old buildings here and it's quite a quiet spot when school is not in session. The University of Otago is the oldest university in New Zealand and has an impressive reputation as a top institution globally. off to the Royal Albatross Center at the tip of the Otago Peninsula. We didn't have time for the tour, but we're lucky to see albatross flying about the cliffside on a highly windy afternoon. That is a tip if you don't know. The windier, the better to see these birds. We also spotted some New Zealand fur seals about the beach playing, and it was just lovely. to say the coastal drive from Dunedin out to the Albatross Center and back is one of the most scenic drives we've done in New Zealand. Absolutely stunning. the day with another craft brewery called a steamer basin. This spot is well hidden and very rustic, well worth a visit and the owners are just lovely. We're halfway through our South Island road trip now. Tune in next week for part two where we'll explore Milford Sound, Queenstown, Wanaka and the West Coast. Thanks for watching and see you really soon.